welcome all of you. In the last class, we started discussing about spin echoes. I told you what is a spin echo. It is obtained by the application of two pulses with a delay. It could be 90 tau 180, 90 tau 90 tau and the two delays should be exactly equal. Afterwards, you are going to get an echo. I explained to you how the spin echo works. Then what is going to happen is the spin vectors was, uh, once you apply a first 90 pulse bring it to x axis or y axis they will start defacing with the time. And then after some time what will happen when they are defacing there will be fast moving and slow moving components and they uh, with the time t they will start moving and after certain delay you apply 180 pulse then what will happen the spin vectors get inter interchanged fast moving becomes slow slow moving becomes fast so they get interchanged. As a consequence after some time the all the spin vectors will assemble at the same place in the same axis is exactly I gave you an analogy of runners uh, several runners will be asked to run for a distance they will be running at different speeds after certain time you ask them to stop where they are some would have moved long distance some would have moved short distance uh, whatever the distance they have moved they are all at different distances the x spin vectors deface at different frequencies at different phases and immediately ask them to turn back and run back at the same speed they will all assemble at the same place. This is exact analogy for a spin echo that is what happens for the K spin echo case and I explained to you if taking an example of homonuclear two spins and multiple spins. I showed that whatever may be the offset uh, chemical shift difference between the vectors of uh, doing a spin echo the chemical shifts get completely refocused as a consequence chemical shifts will not evolve there would not be any chemical shift at all it appears as if there is no chemical shift they are at all refocused this is what we understood. Now, the question comes is what happens why only chemical shift what happened to the J coupling that is the thing which we need to understand. Let us consider what happened to the J coupling of course, in A x coupled there, there should be J also, but I took an example of a J being 0. So, that only chemical shift I wanted to consider now I will consider an example with J being present an example of two spins A and X this is what it is A and X two spin coupled and then we have doublet for A why the doublet comes we have been discussing quite a bit because of the spin states alpha and beta of the spin x. Similarly, x will also have the doublet we will consider what happens to the doublet. The, let us say I am going to apply a 190 pulse and bring the magnetization to the x axis I will consider let us say spin a or x whatever it is then it will have doublet I am considering spin a for the position when it is coupled to spin x alpha and beta components then we will have two vectors here one corresponding to alpha orientation of x other corresponding to beta orientation of x. So, we have two vectors and with time delay what happens these alpha and beta vectors of a start moving on either direction. So, one is a fast moving vector other is slow moving vector with respect to this x axis one moves toward this side one moves toward that side fine. Now, you apply a 180 pulse what is going to happen I said everything gets reversed ok you apply a reverse uh, 180 pulse. Now, beta alpha is here alpha went there and beta came back here in the chemical shift case what happened they continue to move in the opposite direction and then refocus along x axis that is what I said, but now there is a j coupling what is the meaning of that that means after again certain delay the question comes will they start moving in the opposite direction will they refocus or will they move in the different direction will they continue to move in the same direction or in the opposite direction will they refocus or not is the question we will answer this question now remember when we have the vectors the vectors will they refocus or not is the question for which remember 180 pulse also inverts the relative orientation of j coupled partner you are considering the double two spin two vectors of the a spin which is coupled to x, but 180 pulse also invert the orientation of x partner that is to a alpha and beta of x as a consequence what happened the doublet component of a which is coupled to x alpha will now be coupled to x beta remember doublet a, a, a will have two components a alpha a beta that comes a alpha comes because of h x alpha a beta comes because of x beta orientation, but they get reversed now. So, x alpha will now be coupled to x beta and vice versa. Now, the alpha and beta components are interchanged that is what I said because of 
one eighty pulse also acts on X pin. What is happening now? The faster moving components move slower and vice versa. Then instead of refocusing, they continue to move in the opposite direction, in the same direction. They will not deface. They they will continue to deface. Not they will not refocus. They continue to deface. This is what is happening. They won't refocus now. Earlier, what happened in the case of uh, uh, only chemical shift? They after one eighty pulse, they started moving backwards like this, and then refocus along the x-axis. But now, because of J coupling, they started moving in the opposite direction like this. So fast and slow moving component exchanged. They started moving in the opposite direction. So there is no question of defacing. In fact, it continues for the no question of refocusing continuously. Defacing goes on. So that means J splitting. In the homonuclear case, are not refocus in spin echo. Remember, homonuclear spin echo refocus only chemical shifts and not J couplings. Please remember, homonuclear spin refocus only chemical shifts and not J couplings. Okay, this is for the homonuclear case. You may ask me a question: What happens if I consider the heteronuclear spin, like not homo, like two protons? Instead of that, I'll consider the proton and carbon heteronuclear spin. How the J evolution takes place under spin echo? Now we can think of several possibilities. For the J coupled heteronuclei, what we can do is we can apply one eighty pulse only on the spin A. That is possible because you know heteronuclei are at different resonating frequencies, several megahertz apart. As a consequence, we can separately individually apply RF pulse both on spin A, only on spin A. Only on spin X are both on spin Y and X. I mean, tenacity we can apply. All the three possibilities exist. Whereas in the case of the homonuclear, if you apply a 180 pulse on Y, simultaneously X pulse, which is coupled to it, also gets reversed because it is a homonuclear spin. But here I can separately apply pulse 180 pulse either only on proton, only on carbon, or both of them. Let us see one when the 180 pulse is applied on either Y or X only, what will happen to the uh, this thing? So how the Vectors will start moving. What will happen is, please remember. Now I am applying the one eighty pulse only on Y or X. Only that spin will experience one eighty pulse. It will other heteronuclear spin will not experience because they are megahertz apart, and it is not going to be touched at all. It is not getting affected at all. As a consequence, only particular spin on which you apply one eighty pulse get experience this one eighty pulse, and the effect is seen only on that. So in in such a case, what will happen? Similar to chemical shift, J coupling will refocus. What happened after the one eighty pulse is applied only on that? Because in the this in this case, coupled spin is not touched. Only when coupled to spin is touched, I said alpha and beta components. If H alpha, for example, A alpha coupled to H alpha or C alpha for the heteronuclear spin will get to beta spin. So that get interchanged alpha and beta spin states. That will not happen now. So similarly, like chemical shift, they continue to move like this, and then refocus. What does it mean? If you apply one eighty pulse and only any one of these spins, J coupling will refocus. What happened in the case of homonuclear? They J was not refocusing at all. But in the case of heteronuclei, whether you apply one eighty pulse on only an A or only an X does not matter. J will refocus. Okay. This is what happens. In fact, we always say one eighty pulse on a heteronuclear spin generally results in decoupling. This is the phenomenon. What do you mean by that? J couplings will not evolve. See, for example, this internuclear vector comes along y axis because of J, you know, plus half or minus half, they will start moving in the opposite directions. And after the one eighty pulse, what will happen? They will again continue to move in the same direction. They get interchanged, but then continue to move instead of J moving like plus half moving like this, they start continue to move in the same direction. Only this positions get interchanged, but the direction of motion is continuing to be same direction. As a consequence, what happens? They refocus along same axis. It is nothing but telling decoupling. So remember, we always say you apply a one eighty pulse at the middle of the evolution period in one of the spins A or X spin in a heteronuclear system, then you will have J coupling. Refocus is nothing but decoupling. That is the concept. Now you may ask me a question. So far, we was considering only application of one eighty percent ARX. This phenomena happens. J will refocus. 
what happens if I apply 180 pulse simultaneously and both heteronuclear spins? It is possible. Then what will happen? It is like applying to homonuclear spin. If you apply a 180 and a spin, a x spin spin states gets interchanged also as a consequence. So, a which is alpha state will experience beta similarly gets reverse vice versa exactly analogous to homonuclear situation when you apply 180 pulse simultaneously and both heteronuclear spin then vec a vectors will start defacing there is no question of refoc refocusing at all vectors will not refocus you understand please remember the concept in the homonuclear spin echo chemical shifts are refocused but not j coupling in the heteronuclear spin echo if 180 pulse is applied on only any one of the heteronuclei a or x spin then what will happen j will refocus whereas if you apply 180 pulse simultaneously in both a and x spins or both the heteronuclear spin j will not refocus this is important concept you must remember so heteronuclear spin echo is like this this is a situation where i am going to apply 180 pulse both on i spin and s spin i and s are heteronuclear spin usually i is considered as proton s as a heteronuclear spin some other spin offsets are refocus j coupling will evolve they will not refocus that is what I said 180 pulse simultaneously and both no question of refocusing of j coupling. So, only but chemical shifts get refocused that like 180 pulse like, uh, like in the homonuclear case like homonuclear system chemical shift refocus but j coupling will evolve. What happens if you apply 180 only an i just now we discussed only i spin of facet is refocused but j coupling is also refocused s yes, spin nothing will happen s yes, spin will keep chemical shift keep evolving. Now, apply 180 only on S spin not on I spin what is going to happen extend the logic. Now, S spin offset is refocused and J coupling is also refocused, but I spin offset I spin chemical shift nothing happens. These are the three different spin echo experiments you can do when you have heteronuclear spins involved all right. With this idea we understood now what a what will happen to spin echo case. Spin echo is a summary is just 90 tau 180 tau sequence depending upon whether applying a homonuclear spin and heteronuclear spin if it is a homonuclear spin chemical shift will refocus j coupling will not refocus if it is a heteronuclear case if 180 pulse is applied on one of the spins j will refocus whereas if heteronuclear spins are applied simultaneously like this what is going to happen j will continuity evolve if applied simultaneously in both that is it. Okay, now, we will see some J modulation of spin echo this is something important concept you should know. What is the meaning of J modulated spin echo? Let us consider the 13 C spin echo sequence under decoupling. What is a spin echo sequence? It is nothing but this one 90 T D 180 T D this is a de delay for echo both are identical 180 pulse you can apply Y R X does not matter. And then what we do is after this immediately we start collecting the signal by decoupling proton we need to do the decoupling because we need uh, the carbon 13 as I told you always the recorded with the broadband decoupling. So, that you get individual resonance for each chemically inequivalent carbons. So, we have to do the decoupling fine in the first TD what will happen coupling between carbon and the proton here I am taking carbon and proton they evolve. But during the second T D what is happening I am applying the R F pulse they are decoupled. But chemical shifts are refocused during both the time that we have already understood chemical shifts get refocused, but J coupling gets decoupled in the second delay ok this is what is what is the spin echo we have to do and the decoupling if we have to decouple this thing. But how does these different carbons evolve in the spin echo sequence. Now, I am considering the heteronuclear spin echo because I am looking at carbon coupled to C A, C H 2, C A 3 and quaternary all the 4. How these vectors evolve in the spin echo sequence? We will try to understand that and of course, we will I am considering one band coupling forget about long range couplings we are not bothered. The evolution of magnetization vectors after the 90 degree pulse we can understand it in a simpler possible way. There is an equation which I have not discussed in the previous course I have discussed after applying a uh, pulse bring the magnetization to x axis or y axis and give some time delayed T d 
the spin vector start you know defacing they start moving in different faster and slow moving uh, components will be there and depending upon the strength of the coupling they start moving how fast how much it has rotated how much they have moved in the xy plane is given by an angle theta and theta is given by pi into time delay into j coupling is the value if you know this j coupling if you know how much time you have delayed did you delay you have given then i can tell you how much the spin vectors have moved in the xy plane very easy to calculate all you need to know is time delay and j coupling and i know this is a constant i i know angle by which these vectors have moved, moved. okay that's right correct now next is but remember one thing since we are worried about the j coupling quaternary carbons always stationary there is no j coupling there is no fast moving slow moving components they remain stationary they will be always along one axis so if you detect that you always get a positive signal there is no question about it you bring the magnetization to x axis from the z axis put a receiver here you always get signal for quaternary positive signal fine what about other carbons we are not worried only about quaternary carbons what about other carbons and let us consider one by one first we consider only ch carbon carbon coupled to proton what is the multiplicity pattern it is a two spin coupled two spin of carbon will be a doublet we are not worried about proton we are looking at carbon carbon will be a doublet all right now what we will do is after 90 degree pulse the doublet components alpha and beta of carbon start evolving under jch and for the interval td which is given in the spin echo sequence what is jch we can always know we know the jch this is the diagrammatically what happens magnetization initially at thermal equilibrium it is at thermal equilibrium apply 90 pulse and bring it to x axis they start rotating the x and alpha and beta component in opposite direction fast moving and slow moving components but remember exactly after 90 pulse 45 degree 180 degree what happens we can calculate using the t equation theta is equal to pi into t into jch that we, I, we know that we can calculate now for different values of j how much it moves we will find out for example for td exactly to 1 over 4 j what are the j value i don't care what the, how much it has moved put td is equal to 1 over 4 j this j and j cancel out it is 1 over 4 of pi it is 45 degree what will happen is the spin vectors both alpha and beta components would have rotated by 45 degrees that's fine so this is how it is at exactly 1 over 4 j x and y components have moved by 45 degrees in the xy plane i am talking okay it is i am showing only the two dimensional graph but it is from z axis it brought to xy plane you have to see in the imagine in a three dimensional plane i am in the xy plane i am talking they are moved by 45 degree from x axis it was there started moving like this spin vectors would have rotated by 45 degree that is what we calculated fine we will go further calculate what happens if it is 1 over 2 g as h that is again put the value t d is equal to 1 over 2 j c h then it is become 90 degree what would have happened the magnetization would have come along x axis and now they start moving in the x y plane by 90 degree both of them would have moved on 90 degree from x it would have come to y plus 1 1 minus y component should be there so they will be opposite in phase they will, they will be anti phase magnetization See if the doublet vectors both in the same phase like this they are in phase doublet if one is positive other is negative like this it is called anti phase doublet so now after exactly 1 over 2 jch the alpha and beta components would have would have become anti phase they would acquired anti phase character okay exactly phase difference of 180 degree one is here here y along y axis because in the xy plane you remember 90 degree from x axis they would have moved and z is along this axis so they would have one component would have moved to plus y other would have moved to minus y so that's what i'm showing you here and it would acquire a phase difference of 180 degree then if you measure the intensity have a receiver here it is zero whereas the quaternary it was here and you measured from here it was full intensity but now ch intensity 
and exactly equal to 1 over 2 j because in the this vector alpha and beta vectors are opposite of in phase by 90 each of them are anti phase in character there is a 180 degree phase difference intensity is 0 because positive negative component of the vector gets nullified there would not be any signal you will not get the signal fine. Now, we after the time delay you apply a pulse pi pulse what will happen we are given de delay after exact 1 over 2 j it would have become anti phase. Now, we apply a pi pulse what is the ex uh, duty of the pi pulse I have not discussed in this course, but in the previous course I have discussed pi pulse always invert the signal from plus z axis it will bring to minus z axis. In other words what is going to happen is it will completely reverse us from uh, alpha and beta component from plus z to minus z minus z to plus z it and uh, inverts the magnetization. Simultaneously you start doing the proton decoupling this is what happens alpha and beta components you can start revolve, resolving into vectors and let us say after 90 degree they get interchanged invert uh, 180 pulse invert the magnetization and from here to here it became like this. Now, resolve into two components this sector vectors in the opposite direction gets nullified this gets added up. So, there is a magnetization along this axis where is that magnetization now it is in the minus x axis what happened now in the case of C h vector at exactly equal to 1 over 2 j you apply a 180 pulse and you see magnetization is along minus x axis both the opponent components are cancelling out the vector addition cancel this one where this one gets added up all right that means you are going to get a singlet that is fine. So, each doublet vector now at for a t theta is equal to 1 over j we have 180 degree each doublet vector will rotate through one half like this from here it will go to one half like this other one comes like this and then they meet again at minus x that is what it means. Of course, the components along this axis get is nullified only this component we are detecting all right. In effect what is the what do you understand from that in the homonuclear spin spin echo we discuss this vectors start defacing and again they come back into the same axis both the vectors we called it as refocusing it means chemical shift there is a refocusing, but the signal is along minus x axis instead of detecting in the plus axis signal is in the opposite direction minus x what does it mean it means if you detect the signal like this you have a receiver here signal is along this axis you get a negative signal same signal with a negative phase negative signal means negative phase quarterly was here only and it is positive ch is negative that is what happens. So, intensity of ch you can also calculate I took only example of 2 or 3 time delay like uh, half j 1 over 2 j like that, but instead what will happen as a function of delay keep on varying the delay and calculate it at exactly equal to 1 over 2 j signal is 0 that is what we saw at the exact 1 over j of it, it will come back and it is a negative intensity that is what we saw at 1 over j the vector component start moving and then reassemble refocus in the negative x axis. So, it is you are going to get negative signal for C H. So, C H carbon you get a singlet there is a chemical shift refocusing, but also negative intensity a singlet to negative intensity and how does the intensity vary it depends upon the cosine of the angle cosine of the delay and it is 0 for T D values equal to multiples of 1 over 2 j and maximum for 1 over 2 j that is like what you saw in this graph it is 0 for 1 over 2 j are multiples of that it is always like this for one multiples of 1 over j. So, j c h s generally are not identical you may ask me a question different carbon with the proton one bond coupling could be different need not be same different molecule one may have 140 one may have 150 hertz other may have 200 hertz 170 like that we always assume approximate value of 150 hertz and then start the work. What happened to a c h 2 carbon something interesting CH2 carbon is a triplet central component will not process it will be always gets aligned along x axis. Now, what will happen for a T day again same apply 90 pulse bring the magnetization to z axis x axis and give a delay 
what will happen exactly at 1 over 2 j this will come back earlier they were anti phase like this, but now they are going to minus x axis why because remember in the j coupling here is like this for one uh, uh, tablet whereas, here in the triplet this itself is j not half like here, here if you measure this j you have half of the j one component is here half the j this is half j whereas, here one j that means, if you have a triplet one uh, one of the component with respect to the central uh, component itself is the j value it is almost twice of j coupling between this one uh, doublet we will say for the doublet it is almost half of it compared to triplet as a consequence for 1 over 2 j in instead like instead of ch proton where it is have a anti phase with along y axis they come back and refocus along this. Okay, we will now give another time delay after the 180 pulse continue see what is going to happen they come back and all the three components one to one we get aligned here and we are collecting the signal here. What, we are, what is that we are going to get CH2 carbon has a signal intensity as a function of TD is a, when you consider the situation of a triplet it is like this at exactly 1 over 2 j it is 0 intensity you may be surprised why it is 0 intensity previous CH case they were anti phase along y axis it was 0, but now why it is 0 we we'll go back and see here both the components of the vector uh, doublet here and a center component is here again vector addition at 1 over 2 j is 0. So, as a consequence you can see at 1 over 2 j its intensity is 0 at 1 over j uh, all the three vectors come back to the x axis they reassemble there the refocus as a consequence it is a positive intensity. So, C H 2 will be a positive intensity for C H 2 carbon also you can for monitor the change in the intensity like that. You may ask me a question what happened to C A 3 carbon C A 3 carbon remember as 4 vectors from the center we have 1 3 3 1, but what is going to happen is like this. Okay. So, now let us see the 3 carbon has 4 vectors fast too fast moving and too slow too slow moving after the TD delay they will be like this too fast moving and too slow moving will be like this. After I apply a pi pulse then again reverse it pi pulse inverts the magnetization they you invert it. Now, depending upon which uh, axis you are going to apply I showed you already you can apply along this axis rotate like this if you apply along this axis you can rotate like this along y axis it is rotated again resolve into two components the components along this axis gets nullified because of vector addition whereas this one gets added up okay. after some time delay exactly when t is equal to 1 over j then what will happen they will refocus and you get a singlet what is happening now your receiver is here signal you are going to get is negative again singlet with a negative intensity that is what happened the behavior of C A 3 is similar to C H the intensity is maximum of 1 over 2 j and negative maximum at 1 over j. Now, C A 3 carbon variation if you see it exactly at 1 over 2 j it is 0 all the 3 carbons C H C H to C A 3 at exactly 1 over 2 j signal intensity is 0 but at 1 over j C A 3 and C H are negative C H 2 is positive that is important you should remember. So, I am showing this in a table like this you have different time delay delay when it is equal to 1 over 2 j C H for a quaternary carbon it will never persist always positive C H carbons at 1 over 2 j all C H C H 2 and C H 3 are 0 whereas, at 1 over j C H C H is negative C H 2 is positive C H 3 is negative we can calculate that the signal intensity as a function of j is modulation is like this as a function of j modulation if you keep on varying the T d activity which correspond to 1 over t or 1 over 2 j like that when it is exactly at 1 over 2 j which correspond to 90 degree all the carbons will have 0 intensity C A 3 is C H 2 is positive C A 3 and C H are negative at 1 over j you see at 1 over j it keeps going and that is how it is and only quaternary carbon is seen 
important thing you remember quarterly carbon is unaffected as a consequence one over 2 j quarter is always positive that is always seen only other 3 carbons are 0. So, the delay changes one over with delay which depends upon one over 2 j c h makes c h and c 3 carbons have one particular sign c h 2 and quaternary carbons of opposite sign whether you make this positive or that positive is your convention normally conventionally what is done is these two are always made positive phase corrected and these two are made negative you can do the way you want you can re reverse it also but convention followed is this one so j coupling although it is different assume to be 150 hertz and do this and this what happens look at it a simple example hypothetical example uh, of a molecule like this ch2 ch3 are and quarter area are positive ch3 and ch are negative here this is called attach the proton test by doing the spin echo experiment with j modulation at a setting a delay which is equal to 1 over j c h you can find out depending upon the sign of the signal whether it is positive or negative you can say whether it is c h or c a 3 whether it is quaternary or c h 2 that is possible this is a realistic example of a molecule see for this these three are positive correspond to c h 2 and this is a quaternary is positive these are all c a 3 and c h s and this is an example of a molecule tri terpene you see at when delay is equal to 1 over j 2 j what do you expect I showed you 1 over 2 j all the 3 carbons are 0 all the ch ch2 ch3 but quarter is not 0. So, at if you set the delay equal to 1 over 2 j in the attached proton test only carbons which has not attached any protons you are going to see including CdCl3 solvent whereas, at uh, j is equal 1 over j you can see that this is ch2 sir positive ch and ch3 sir negative and this is a conventional compare these two you can identify what are the quaternary carbons you can identify what are the ch2 carbons and what are the ch3 carbons but only thing is how do you distinguish between ch and ch3 is a bit problematic that we have to see later so a, this is an example of an apt spectrum of menthol again we have a lot of ch2 and ch3 here and all the three ch2 are here and these are ch and ch3 so, basically what J modulation I wanted to cover in this example in this class is it is called an attached proton test. We discussed about the heteronuclear spin echo and we, we I said when you apply only 180 pulse and only one of them J will not refocus only chemical sheet of that will refocus whereas, if apply 180 pulse and both then J will refocus. So, all those things we discussed ok. The, we, we understood everything what is the what is happening for the homonuclear case and heteronuclear case and then in the j modulation I said when you use a spin echo sequence with proton decoupling depending upon the delay you is going to use today in the spin echo 90 tau 180 tau sequence depending upon the delay when delay is equal to 1 over 2 j all the chicka chicka carbons are signal intensity 0 only quaternary will be seen whereas, when it is exactly equal to 1 over j then c h 2 will be positive c h and c h 3 are negative and quaternary is also positive this way we can do the identification of different carbons attached to different number of protons this is called attached proton test the basic thing for this is to understand spin echo if you know spin echo homonuclear internuclear case how it happens you can do this modulation j modulation experiment and identify different carbons thank you very much we will continue further in the next class thank you.